I'm Pamela Jean Noble, your host for Hot Shots. Catch us every Saturday at 5 o'clock on KBCR. Hello and welcome to Hot Shots. Today we have three guests from Women of the World High School. Our first guest today is Jake Taylor. Jake plays football, runs track, and is also very active within his community as a Boy Scout and at his church. Welcome, Jake. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you. All right, so what's going on in your season right now? Um, we're in the semifinals in CIF, and uh, we're pl playing banding next Friday. And uh, I have uh, 3,300 yards wow. rushing and 47 touchdowns. Um, and that, the 3,300 yards is the record uh, for San Bernardino County. Wow. And um, just building on to that. And uh, the 47 touchdowns is actually a school record now. Nice. And um, hopefully we can win CIF. So that's obviously what you're looking forward to is just going there. Yeah. And then, I mean, as far as what are you trying to work on? And um, I mean, I'm sure as a team and yourself, there's something that you're trying to get better on and work on as a team and to get that goal. Yeah. In practice, we just got to focus and, you know, just uh, focus on their key players and just try to shut them down. Nice. Um, any opportunities you think this is going to open up for you? Um, I hope so because... Um, this uh, this week's gonna determine a lot because mm -hmm. um, as me and Sty Hairston, two top rushers in the state, nice, and um, just whoever does better in this is better athlete. Well, okay, and you obviously you're getting awards and all that good stuff. Um, so do you have any schools that are looking at you or any scouts right now at this point? Um. I went over to Washington State over the summer, and they were interested in me. And uh, West Point came to my school last school year. Okay. And uh, hopefully Nebraska is, we're going to get in contact with them. Nice. Which one would you prefer out of all those? Um, right now I'm leaning towards Nebraska if we can get in talk contact with them. Okay. And then what would be your second pick? Uh, probably Washington State. And you have to choose by March, I heard? Uh, yeah. So your your time is ticking right now. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, what could you say um, you'd be most looking forward to when you pick your school? Um, which one has, like, a, the best education? Okay. And um, best education combined with the best athletic programs. Yeah. Which one out of those three has the best football team? Uh, Nebraska. Nice. So no, you're like all about Nebraska right now. Yeah. <laughs> so in all of this, I mean, you guys are going to CIF, all this good stuff. What is driving you to do as good as you're doing? Because you're obviously doing excellent right now. Um, you know, it's just one to not let my team down because uh, I love them all. And um, I just, I've wanted this since I was a kid, just be able to play on varsity football and play for a CIF, and uh, it's just, I'm competitive, I just want to win. I'm sure your dad has something to do with that too, right, because he's your yeah. coach? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, when I was in youth, actually my first year, I wanted to quit, but he inspired me not to, because he actually did when he was in high school, and he, he's regretted it ever since. Oh, what did you remember? Like anything he told you during that time to like keep you going? Um, he just said, if you really don't want to, then don't. But be serious about your decision and know that you're gonna have to live with it for the rest of your life. And at a young age, you were like, holy crap, that's a lot on me right now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna have to go to bed on this one, Dad. Yeah. <laughs> so how is your team? helped you during this whole time because you're, once again, breaking records, guys are going to CIF, you're doing an amazing job right now. So how's your team helped you get this far so far? You know, my team, I couldn't have done any, any of it without my team, especially my line, because they're the dirt dogs. I get <laughs> it all done and uh, open up the holes for me. But um, they're all very supportive and they all 
They're very proud of me. And uh, I'm just really happy for them and us. And you're captain of your team. So what role do you think you play with your team as being their captain? Um, well, actually, we voted captains at the beginning of the season, or beginning of league. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't one of the vote captains on. But um, Shay Loring, Zach Black, and Justin Harden were. And, um, but I'm more of a lead by example nice. and a leader, I guess. And what do you, I mean, besides, like, obviously football things, but is there anything else that you, like, lead them in that you feel like, you know, you're inspirational and? Um, just going out on Friday nights and being able to lead my team. What um, is the Corn Huskers prayer? I think that's what you said. Is your guys' little ritual before? Uh, it's this prayer, and uh, I'm not going to do it here, but... <sighs> Um, we get all, all of our football team together and we take a knee, we hold hands, and we uh, say this prayer. And um, right before we go out, come out of our team room. And uh, it, it's, really, it's really something. Is it, was that a tradition or did that just get started this year? I think um, our, my, our center, Rudy Murillo, started it uh, my uh, last year. Last year. Mm -hmm. Nice. And you said it was taken from something From Nebraska. Else? Nebraska. Your yeah. guys' team is all about Nebraska. <laughs> <laughs> so you're an uh, inspirational speaker for the youth uh, football program. Mm -hmm. um, what do you do there? Um, well, my little brother, Duffy, is um, on the youth football team. Okay. And one day he, or he wanted me to come and talk to them because they're in going to the playoffs this today is oh, wow. their first playoff game and um, so I went and talked to them and uh, they all knew me and it was cool because they all looked up to me and uh, I just let them know that I was excited for them and um, then uh, just got them all pumped up for their game. Nice so how long have you been being an inspirational speaker for them now. Uh, I've the first time I did it was actually this Thursday, and um, it it was just like a last minute thing, but I I felt good that I did it. And you helped so much; they want you back now. Yeah. <laughs> nice. It's always a good thing, right? Uh huh. So, what made you go down and choose to be a speaker for them that day? Um. It was just I wanted to help out a little, and since they, they're so supportive of me and my team, I just wanted to support them a little. And how did it make you feel after? It made me feel good because uh, just helping out some kids that want to come up and be an athlete, so just helping out a little. Definitely. And then let's talk a little bit about you do church community service too. What do you do there? Um, we go there and uh, we'll all meet up at our church and we'll go out and we'll uh, do like yard work or random stuff like that. And uh, we have this um, thing called De or Desert Industries. We have a room that we put, donate stuff to there. And every end of the month or whatever, we go and uh, bring it down to Desert, in Desert Industries. KDCR would like to congratulate the Varsity football team from Room of the World for winning the CIF Southern Section East Valley title game. It was a hard-fought game, and KDCR Sports' very own Dennis Paulson was there to interview several of the players. Jacob Taylor, number one running back in the state, number two in the nation before the game tonight, but uh, might be number one. What a game, huh? You'd have a fumble all year. Had a little tough night, huh? Yeah. No, but you played great. I mean, Jake, that was that was a very good team, right? Yeah, they're the best we've played all year. You know, without a doubt. Best I've ever and, played. Um, I mean, I, I'm just, you had to play DB both ways. Did you even come out of the game? No. You didn't come out at all, uh -huh. huh, right? Had to run punch. So, uh, what do you have? How many yards do you think you had tonight? I have no idea. No I'm idea. Shocked I no, you, I, dude, speeches. 36 years. Your dad, would your dad and mom go to rim? back in the day so this is huge for the family to win this big win anything else you want to say on this on, uh, 
O-line, coach. You, O-line. Welcome back. Our second guest today is Zach Black. Zach also plays football, maintains above a 3.0 GPA, and is actively involved in Boy Scouts. Welcome, Zach. Thank you. So tell me, what is the special band that you have? Uh, Coach Knega, he's our medical help, you know, and he helps us with any injuries we have. And I got turf burn one game, and so he gave me this just blue bandage to wrap around it, and you slide it up, and uh, uh, actually, it's been good luck. Like, I've been having great games ever since, and like, I wore it at home game, our, it was our homecoming game, and uh, I intercepted the ball and ran for a touchdown, and so I've had it on ever since. And what's the superstition that you have? Uh, I'm afraid to not wear it anymore. Like, if I don't know what would happen. You think you're going to have a bad game if yeah, you wear it? Yeah, so I keep it on. Nice. So tell me about the Swedish Swedish exchange program you yeah. participated yeah. in. What, what was that? Uh, my sophomore year, uh, I was in automotive class at the high school. And Dave McGuire, the automotive teacher, he um, and the school, we have this program where we – select kids from the class and I was selected with uh, other, another two and um, we spent three weeks over in Sweden learning how they they run their program and their school and their education and just like travel and all around like uh, that area and it was nice it's beautiful over there and then um, we actually host three of their students at our houses so wow. it was a great experience that's not a bad way to spend three weeks at all no <laughs> So, I mean, what do you think that you learned out of there that, um, what did you come most out of that experience with? Um, when I went over there, I really noticed, like, th how welcoming, like, they are. And they, their culture is so different from ours, you know. And um, their schooling over there is more like, uh, their high schools are more like junior colleges for what they want to pursue as a career in. Okay. Which is nice. And so the school I was at was just all about automotive, and they had heavy mechanics, um, light mechanics, and they had people who would work on diesels and stuff, and then people who did strictly body work and collision. So that was nice. And it's just the teachers there, they all specialize in that area. And so you go to school to learn about that, and that was it. So what was the most culture shock thing you experienced over there? Uh, their food is a lot different than ours. And they had this paste, it was like uh, caviar, like, or the fish eggs that came out of a tube and they'd put it on toast and stuff and they'd like it and it's just and you said no no <laughs> so no worries so what college are you looking at and are most interested in right um now? right now i'm most interested in northern arizona for because i really would like to actually if i went to northern arizona would pursue in their forestry uh program and get a major in that i think that'd be awesome and i love the location it's just like the mountains we have so I'm really used to that. And Fort Lewis is actually a very nice area, too, in Colorado. Um, but if I wanted to stay here and s stay close to home, it would be San Diego. So in Arizona, you said forestry program. What is that for people who don't know? Um, the forestry program at NAU would be uh, just, like, all about um, outdoors and uh Forest Service, I think, like rangers and stuff like that, and people who go in, like, environmentally. Very nice. And then out. is San Diego State, do they have, like, a good automotive program or anything? Cause what do you... What do you oh, that I, I'm not really sure of. You're uh, not sure? No. Would you... And engineering, I think they do. Yeah. And actually, Northern Arizona has a great engineering program, so... And is that what you most want to pursue? You're going to let go of your automotive thing? Yeah, I would love to. <laughs> awesome. So you mentioned three people who have been very influential on you. Um, can you talk about each one and, you know, say how they helped you grow or inspired you or why they're influential to you? Of course. Well, each year I've played on varsity for a football team. I've had a different line coach each year. I started out with uh, Tim Steele, and he's been coaching at RIM forever. And uh, he brought me up, actually, my sophomore year and said, you know, you're playing tackle for us this year. And I was actually a tight end for uh, the JV team, but... He brought me up and turned me into a tackle for varsity, and I was all new to the line and stuff. So, And then uh, the next year, John Dennis was my line coach for my junior year, and he definitely helped me out like throughout the whole season. And I'd like to thank him for every achievement that I got that year, like all the awards. like I made all CIF and all league. And then um, this year we have just our head coach, 
Bob Gradius, he's been helping out with the line. And so he's our line coach this year, and um, it's been going great, you know. We've been nine games winning, and the line's been helping out Jake Taylor. So it's definitely been working. Is there um, anything one of those people have said to you that you'll remember for the rest of your life that just inspired you? Uh, Tim Steele, he always just taught me to work hard, you know, and to just technique. And that's what it is for me is because I'm – really not a lineman, uh, not really that big. I'm just tall and have some muscle on, but it's all about technique for me. So it's been working. Very good. And what about your coach for this year? Uh, Bob Rudius, he's all about quickness and getting to, like all, getting off the line in the first step and the first punch, you know, so and it works. Well, that's good. Everyone's giving you something different to focus on. Yeah, and that's what's been helping. Mm -hmm. it's been, I think that's the best thing, too, has, is that it has been a different coach each year. Mm -hmm. And so I've learned something each year, and just it's been helping Combined, out my senior. Yeah. Getting you guys going. Awesome. Okay, so you're in Boy Scouts. Um, what is your ranking right now? I'm currently a Life Scout okay. working on my Eagle, and I'm in the middle of my Eagle project and working on some merit badges. I have to finish to earn my eagle. And what made you want to get involved in Boy Scouts and kept you going this long? Um, I got involved in Boy Scouts when I was really little. I was a tiger cub, so I started out in Cub Scouts, actually, mm. and I've been in it ever since. And uh, I love just being outdoors, and that's the greatest thing I like about our mountains, too. And so Boy Scouts really helped with that and just going camping all the time and hiking all of the activities that we do. And that's what's kept you in it this far? Yeah. And so what's your project for Eagle Scouts? Uh, my Eagle Scout project is to help out our softball team at our school. And they have these locker rooms that I'm redoing for them and putting in shelves and uh, some benches for them. Very cool. Yeah. Um, is there, so I don't know much about Boy Scouts because obviously I'm a girl. So tell me and anybody else who doesn't know, what um, I'm sure that looks good on like your resume and other yes. things, but what else does it do for you? Uh, it helps you it just builds character and mm -hmm. it teaches you all about like uh, tw there's 12 points and as a boy scout there's trustworthy loyal helpful friendly courteous kind obedient cheerful thrifty brave clean and reverent nice. and so that teaches you all of that you know and you live it every day great job congratulations Zach. So tell us how pumped you really are I'm big so dog pumped. this is amazing this is the greatest feeling i've ever felt this is going to stay there for life i'm going to remember this you guys forever. Still celebrating tonight maybe yeah, possibly hell, heck yeah. defense won the game though for him how about them two defensive stance earlier that was huge that wasn't was, it? yes we needed that and that's defense won our game Locked defense up. wins championships yeah, you guys did such a great job how many kids play both ways look like you got but we got like two guys, eight guys. Eight oh, guys on amazing and, and phenomenal job. I mean, done a great job all year. Coach, you know, getting canned, then coming back. Yeah. And it's been a great job to win it for him and win it for all your teammates. 36 years, right? 36 years. And I got to thank all our coaches for helping us prepare for this. That's huge. Oh. Anything else? Uh, thank you for everyone's support. I love everyone. God bless. All God right, bless. Zach, go have fun. Thank God luck. So Congratulations, much. guys. Welcome back. Our last guest today is Daniel James. Daniel is also on Rim of the World football team, throws the shot put and discus for his track and field team, maintains a 3.5 GPA, and volunteers his time at Operation Provider. Welcome, Daniel. Thanks for having me. All right, so let's talk about why you're interested in majoring in forensics. Uh, right now, I'm in a class of anatomy and physiology, and I just find uh, studying like how the body works and everything uh, is just interesting. You know, I like it. Definitely. Were there any other majors that you were interested in before you were in that class? Uh, communications. But this one, once you're in that class, it was all over with. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Yep. Um, anything else that kind of drove you to that besides the class? Um, you know, like I see it on TV shows and stuff, and it always looks kind of cool. Definitely. So. Um, do you know anybody who has majored in forensics, or you're going to be the first person that you know? First person. Very cool. Yeah. So um, you've been doing football for 11 years. Uh, why have you stayed in, and stayed in it that long? Like, is there certain things that it helps you to be a better person? Or Yeah, um, it definitely helps you to be a better person. Also, the camaraderie, you know, mm -hmm. it's like you have a family. And um, just the personal commitment and overcoming things. Definitely. And your family, you said it's like having family in your football team, but there's one thing that you wish your football team was involved in. Can we talk about that? Yeah. 
Yeah, what is that that you volunteer for? Uh, I volunteer for a food drive called Operation Provider. Okay. And uh, it's up in Rim Forest, and they uh, they give food out to the community twice a week, and they have a special Thanksgiving turkey dinner give out nice. with the Elks Lodge. Yeah. And you wish that they were involved. Yeah, um, I could get some football players together, and we could uh, give out some turkeys on Thanksgiving. Very yeah, cool. Do they do stuff for Christmas as well? Yeah, they give out um, presents. You know, they get presents donated and, and stuff, as nice. well as food. Like toys for tots, kind of. Yep. And are you involved in like? Getting the toys or picking up toys as well, or just distributing them? Uh, distributing them. Very cool. Yeah. Um, so what are your goals for the future? Um, I would really like to go to a four-year university and hopefully play football there. Very nice. Are you looking? You said you're looking at a couple right now. Yeah. Which one are you leaning towards? Um, probably Azusa Pacific. Okay. Yeah. What's drawing you to that school? Um, it's a Christian school, and you know it's not too far away, but far enough, you know, far enough, and uh, they have a good football team and uh, just all around good program. You said that um, an inspirational person in your life is your brother, where did, did he go there or he went somewhere else? Um, he played at my high school that I play at now. Okay. He graduated in uh, 2004. Where did he go to college though? He was going to go to a junior college in Chafee but just decided to go straight into work. Okay, and so when he's, is he still home and live in Rim of the world? Yeah, weekends. Okay, yeah. and you like um, to hang out with him and work out with him, right? Yeah. Um, what does it mean to you when he spends the time to work out with you? You know, it, it means a lot. It means that he cares and uh, wants me to grow as a football player and a person. And why is he the most influential person? Um, just because, you know, he's my older brother. He's always been there for me. You know, he's a person I could tell anything. And he played football? Yeah. What was, is he the same position as you? No, he, he actually played running back. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you guys are a little bit different, but he still is at least a pusher for you. Yeah. Very nice. So your most memorable moment was the homecoming assembly. Yeah. What was that? Um, the football players were sitting down on the gym floor while the rest of the school was sitting in the stands. And uh, the captains of our football team introduced every player of the varsity and uh, gave us all like funny nicknames and stuff. So it was nice. just a funny time, like a good time with our team for an, a very important game. Yeah, Did you? how did you guys do in that game? We won. Very uh, we nice. We beat Notre Dame. Yeah. That's always a good thing. Yep. <laughs> all right, so let's talk about Operation Spider. What is it that got you involved in that? Why did you want to start volunteering? Um, you know, I started when I was really young. My grandma actually is the, she runs the organization and um, you know, she got me into it, and ever since then, you know, it's always a good feeling to help the community out. Definitely. Yeah. What, I mean, is that why you've stayed involved in it this whole time, is because of your grandma, or just because of how it makes you feel? Uh, a little bit of both. You know, she needs some help, and, uh, you know, it feels good to help, so I just keep doing it. How many people are involved in that? Um, it's based off volunteers, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, anywhere from 20 to 25. Very nice. During a week. Is there any story that you remember either dropping off food or anything like that that you're going to remember? Um, yeah, when I was, uh, I think I was like eight years old, a family came in for food and we gave them food. And, um, you know, this particular family was in so much need that um, the mom and dad actually came back to start helping give out food to other families in need. Wow. So, yeah, we it just it's cool to see a family touched by that. Mm -hmm. Are they still involved? Yeah, uh, I see the dad every now and then. Very cool. Yeah. And then is there any person, like maybe one of the volunteers or something, that you could tell a story about or inspires you as well? Um, yeah, one of the, uh, like, she's like one of the first volunteers. Her name's okay. Mary. She's like an older Dutch lady. And, uh, you know, she's just like the meanest old lady ever. <laughs> but, you know, she's lo she loves helping people, and uh, she's a good she's a good lady. Do you have like a story or anything funny uh, about yeah. volunteering with her? One time me and my uh, uncle were volunteering there and we were moving boxes from the side of the building and we found an uh, infestation of like cockroaches on the side uh, outside of the building. Uh -huh. So that was no good. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, what, uh, tell us about your grandma. Did she start the operation provider? Yeah, she actually got a, you know grants put together and she started it. Um, I don't know the exact year. Mm -hmm. But, you know, she noticed that the community needed help, and there was a lot of people that were hungry in our community. So she started it up and uh, is the main reason that our community is, you know, thriving now. That's so amazing. Yeah. Um, how many people do you guys think that you affect every year by? Every year? Yeah. How many families? Um, 
we give out food twice a week, and I think it's about 50 meals every time. Wow. So on a year, you know, that's a lot. We help out yeah. a lot of people. How do you think that, you know, being involved in operation provider is going to, how do you think it's going to affect your future? Um, it just opened up a perspective of helping is good. Mm -hmm. You know, it, only good things can come, in, can come from helping other people. Definitely. Now, when you go off to college, are you going to try to find something like Operation Provider around that area and stay involved in something like that? Yeah, definitely. If I could find something that I could help out with, then I would love to do that and always come back to Operation Provider. That's amazing. Yeah. So when you go off to college, are you going to want to find something similar to Operation Provider or find some new thing to volunteer with? Um, maybe just trying to even expand her Operation Provider um, to get food to down the hill, you know, to different kind of yeah. communities. That so, would be wonderful. Yeah, so that'd be a cool thing to work Back, on. congratulations on your big win tonight. CIF champs, East Valley, first time in 36 years. Are you pumped? Yeah, it's crazy. I don't even know how to feel like. This is insane. This is insane. You're not going to get a whole lot of sleep probably tonight. Adrenaline's going to be pumping big, huh? Yeah, it's Wanna crazy. Want to shout out to anyone? Uh, my family, coaches, players, everyone. Everyone involved in football. And you guys did a fantastic job. Congratulations, Danny.